Hey friend, we are just a few scant moments from the end of another week of camp. We've had a wonderful time again. I think I'm even wearing the same shirt as I was last week towards the end of the week of camp. It has been washed, I assure you. But in all seriousness, I want to bring to your attention the most powerful, the most potent, and often the most underutilized offensive tool that the Christian has. Look around this camp, I see structures, I see buildings that have been built, I see young people having a wonderful time, but what we don't see under the surface is the amount of prayer that has gone into seeing this week be a success. And the weeks that have come before and the weeks that will come after. I wonder how often we make little of prayer. Actually, I don't wonder because I have a, an inkling, a sneaking suspicion because of how I treat prayer so often in my own life that we don't spend enough time in prayer. I'm going to ask you today just a very blunt, a very basic, very bottom shelf type of thought. Here I am surrounded by beautiful scenery, God's creation, but the thought that comes to mind is asking you to pray. I realize prayer actually costs something. You may say, Brother Micah, you get further asking us for money. You know, that may be true because in America, even with current inflation, current economics, we still have excess income, most of us. Put it this way, we have money to spend on our priorities. I'm not talking about the bare necessities. If we really needed to find an extra $20 to do some something, uh, we probably could dig in our pockets. We could overturn our couch and we could dump out enough change to feed a family of four in Burma. But I don't ask for your money, though you may have plenty of it. I ask for your prayers. Because prayer actually costs something. Time is the only essence, the only commodity that is not renewable. And prayer requires time. I can speak for myself when I say I don't spend anywhere near as much time in prayer as I should. I think on my prayer list. I, I hope and I pray that I could repeat to you. I could definitely start it and I could get a good way through it from memory because my hope and my prayer is that those thoughts, those things have worn uh, a rut in my brain because I've thought on them so often. I've spent so much time in prayer. But what would you say for you? How much time this past week have you spent in prayer? I say this to your exhortation. Maybe consider tracking how much time you spend in prayer. In my prayer list, I have a page that is dedicated solely to tracking my time, not so I can brag about it, I'm not going to tell you what the time frames are, but simply so I can know and so I can judge the health of my prayer life. I will say this as well, I've made mention on the broadcast before, a man or woman without a prayer list is very likely a man or woman without a prayer life. And so maybe that's the first place to start. For me, I've kept paper prayer lists in the past, and those were not as successful for me. I went electronic. You knew a Kindle, an iPad, all that type of stuff. For me, I went with an iPad. You say, that's an investment. You know, really, if I think back on it, there are two things I use an iPad for, sermon prep and prayer. And my hope is that maybe I spend more time in prayer than even I do in sermon prep. I found oftentimes that your unction, your connection with God is often a direct reflection of your private prayer. My, my power in public speaking is often just a mirror into my prayer life. Those days when I feel like I laid a dud, I look back at the underpinnings, the foundation, I wonder how much time did I really spend in prayer, fervent, effectual prayer. I'm going to ask you very specifically to pray for these next weeks of ministry for the McCurry family. 
Later in August, we'll have a, an opportunity to go to a fair and to try to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ near Rockford, Illinois. Looking forward to what God's going to do through that. In the meanwhile, have the Midwest Christian Boys football camp. We're going to see probably around 300 young men come to camp and for God's glory and the way I'm praying, I'd love to see a dozen or more yield to the call to full-time ministry, the call to preach. I want to ask you to pray for each and every time that I come behind the pulpit. You say, Brother Micah, again, maybe you should talk about the needs, the foreign needs, the international gospel tract uh, printing projects that you have going on. And yes, we could say much about those things. And you can pray much for those things. But maybe, just maybe, I'm going to ask you to pray for those, for me, as I endeavor to communicate the need that we have the needs that we have. We need your prayers. I'm endeavoring today to kind of attack this thing from every which angle. So often, we do everything but pray. I feel like I'm giving so much personal, private, transparent example, but I like to take control sometimes. I like to get my hands in. I I like to get in the mix and try to wrest control away from God. I hope that's not true for you as often as it is for me. But I find that the best success, the most godly success, the most Christ-honoring success comes when I let go and let God. I think I spoke about that. I preached about that just a week or so ago, uh, two, three, four weeks ago. Let go and let God. But to do so, you have to give him the captain's chair. You've seen it. You've heard it before. I'm not saying anything you've heard, not heard before. But you know those old bumper stickers? Maybe you even have one. It says, God or Christ is my co-pilot. Well, friend, if he's your co-pilot, you're making a grave error. That's a mistake. Because Christ should not be in the co-pilot chair. He should be in the captain's seat. And honestly, we probably shouldn't be in the cockpit at all. We probably shouldn't be on the flight deck. We should be sitting back as a passenger saying, God, what you do, I'll be happy with. Where you lead, I'll allow. In your prayer life, I'd ask you, and we'll end with this over the next few moments. I'd ask you, I'd encourage you to begin your prayer life with purity. You realize, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, He is holy. And it is our responsibility to come to Him, as Psalms tells us, with clean hands and a clean heart. And that should be our desire. This thought today, this burden on my heart and life, I'd rather spend these 15 minutes speaking to you, talk, talking about prayer than about really any other subject. It's become a grave burden of mine, my own personal prayer life, but then also asking people just like you to pray for us. You say, Brother Micah, I, I, I tuned out a little while ago. Are you still talking about prayer? Yes, I'm still talking about prayer. I'm asking you to come to God getting rid of all the accoutrements, all the accessories, all of the things. uh, We bring so much baggage in the prayer closet. We're still speaking about purity. I, we bring so much baggage into the prayer closet and expect God to hear us. We come with our minds addled by, absolutely uh, covered with the scent and the grief of sin, the grief to God, because oftentimes we revel in it. We are pigs rooting around in the sin. What an unfortunate thing for us as Christians that a holy God would be so offended by our prayers. When we come to him just moments ago, swiping through the Facebook watch tab, looking at just horrible things, Instagram reels, TikTok. I'll be honest with you, I'm not looking to preach today. I'm just looking to bear my heart. 
And yet then we try to, with purity, come to him in prayer. Why start with purity? Because our prayer life must start with purity. I'd ask you today to examine yourself. When was the last time you prayed in such a way that you know God heard? I, I know he always hears. I, I know he's uh, just omnipotent. I know he's omnipresent. I know he's everywhere. But when was the last time you communed with God in a special way? I realize this is a deep thought. Uh, really not so deep. It's very basic. But I know I'm going far deeper into it than maybe I normally would. But of all the things I could ask you for, your money, oh, that would be last on the list. Ask you to use gospel tracts. Certainly, I'd love for you to use gospel tracts. But more than that, I'd ask you to pray. I need your prayers. Our family needs your prayers. This is not because I, I have some massive announcement to give you or anything like that. Just for the daily things. Give us this day our daily bread. Maybe we'll teach, maybe we'll preach on prayer a little more in the coming days. But I just needed to, as I about to go into another week of camp, one of the last weeks of camp for my summer. First full week of August, Midwest Christian Boys football camp. Some 300 boys will descend upon Dwight, Illinois, my home church. And to God be the glory, I have an integral part in it. Assistant director, handle a lot of the administrative things. We need God to move. We need to move on behalf of our country. But bigger than that, we need God to move on behalf of us, on you, on behalf of you and me. Revivals don't start with churches. Revivals don't start with movements. They don't start with televangelists. They start with individuals, where two or three are gathered in his name. If you've listened all day today, I want to thank you. I hope maybe just some small part of what I've spoken to you about somewhat uh, extemporaneously. I, I've got a camera microphone in one hand. I've got the actual microphone component in my other hand. No notes. I just want to bear my heart to you a little bit. Friend, please, before you do anything else, pray. Thank you so much for joining me today for the broadcast. I'd ask you, if you would, to join us next week. I'm looking forward to what the coming weeks, we've got some minor and major changes coming. Nothing, nothing too earth shattering, but just uh, some quality things, things, things we're trying to make even better in the coming days. I'm so thankful for your part in it all. My prayer as always is that you have a great day for his glory. We'll plan on talking to you soon. God bless. <laughs>